Mark Hi, I'm McGaibo, and as you'll know by now, it is the 20th anniversary of the launch of EVE Online. So congratulations to EVE, New Eden, CCP, well done. Not many games can claim to have done that and still be expanding and evolving as we are today. So there's lots of videos online already about the 20th anniversary sites, both exploration sites and combat sites. There's some really nice rewards in both of them. We've also got the login rewards as well, which are particularly generous this time around. Combinations of skins, skill points, ships, and so many boosters. And a brand new ship here, the Metamorphosis. Just gonna claim mine. And I've been around in EVE for just over 16 of the 20 years that New Eden's been out there. So I just wanted during this video to have a little roam back to one of the systems that I went to when I first started out and to have a little walk down or a fly down memory lane, reminisce about how I began in New Eden. And I'm going to be doing that in this pacifier, which is fit pretty much like a, a light missile gamma. So I'll just be looking to stay out of reach. Got a micro warp drive, little shield tank. But basically, I'll be looking to f fly quite uneventfully, hopefully down to a system called PC9AY and I'll tell you why on the way. So let's set our destination. 16 jumps where I, from where I am. It could be less. 7 jumps if I go the shorter route which is a lot more palatable. We'll do it that way. I started EVE Online and I didn't know anybody that was playing the game. I was looking for something to play online. I didn't know what. I think it was just like a Google or might even have been a Yahoo search at that time that led me to EVE Online and I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing here as I'm doing it. Now I've undocked and the first thing I've noticed is my overview is my ganking overview so I'm just going to change it. Now I've got my PvP overview. I also want to get my directional scanner active so I know what's what and I've got local chat there as well so I can see who's in system with me. So I was googling and found EVE Online which I knew absolutely nothing about. Didn't know anyone who played it and I thought I'd give it a shot. And I remember starting the game and thinking that you would pilot the ship the way that you pilot ships in a other games or even in a flight simulator of pressing a button to accelerate and I think this must be something that we've all been through when you first started. And you realise it, it, it isn't like that. It's more like you tell the ship where you want it to go and then it'll follow your instructions. We've got an epithal on scan here within 5 AU. The only planet near here is planet 7. So we'll, we'll give planet 7 a little look and see. See an epithal is, a plan, is a, an industrial ship that you would normally use for planetary industry and look there it is there there's a ship there and he's doing the PI stuff don't even know if he's noticed that I'm there We can afford to go in a little bit closer. Someone else has entered system here. So we'll just keep on the D scan. See if they're coming towards, oh it's a venture so I think we'll be all right. So yeah, Nepithel is an industrial, Galente industrial, which has a bonus um, for planetary in industry uh, products. So if you see one, it's usually going to be hopping between the planets in a solar system. Which is what's happened there. And as it's in low security space, I'm able to attack him without getting concorded. And he's a bit shieldy. Oh, and he is aggressing me. And I'm caught on this, but... Uh, a drone bay, but he is taking away some of my shield. Someone else in system, so we'll just keep on the D-scan. 
And we're almost through his shield. So we should see him start to melt now. Now that was quite lucky that we we landed or we jumped through the gate right on the planet that he was working on. And there it is, there's the kilt. So just type good fighting system. And take a look and see if he's dropped anything. No, nothing really. Just keep checking D scan. A warp cost stabilizer, oh dear. So, just going to walk to a safe spot, in case any of his friends are thinking of turning up. And a little kill to get us started. He had one little railgun with iron, T1, which is nice. It's cute. So the first step was learning how ships actually flew in EVE Online. We've all been there. And back then, I mean, things were so different with the skill points that you chose your learning skill points. So you had to train up your learning skills before you could focus on what it was that you actually wanted to train. And for some reason, when I started as a Galente, I thought, I really should have high social skills. Clearly this was before I learned what Eve was all about. And then one day I logged in and they'd removed the learning skills and you were given a whole bunch of other skill points to compensate for that. So I'm suspect I'm going to have to be even more careful here. Move my slots around. So I started Eve, started to try and learn what it was about, got invited to a corp, and then was pretty much made a puppet in that corp, which I, I didn't really take to. I don't think I had much interest in mining, but I was cajoled into it. I didn't know any better. But when I realised that what it was about I knew it wasn't really for me and I tried to leave the corp and the corp was run by somebody who wasn't really that interested in developing new players or even being that decent a person and they kept changing my rules which meant that I couldn't leave the corp the rules as they were at the time so I ended up attacking him and and then he let me leave the corp and that's I remember my heart pounding when I decided uh, to do that. And that was my first experience of, of PvP. And I ha had what would have been terrible fits at that point. I remember thinking about, oh, it would be good to have a blaster and a real gun. Uh, so this is very early days. And again, not knowing anyone else in EVE Online, not knowing about an online community or, or anything like that. There was no resources like there is at the moment. Things were very, very different. Eve was only just a, a few years. This is, I'm sure it's before Zed kill. Everyone had their own um, kill boards. And then one day, I went into low security space. And as usual, I was chased by somebody. And I think I would have just been in a, either a frigate or maybe even, maybe a thorax. Flying a bigger ship than my support skills would have, should have justified. Because that was something else you did when, when you began, is you just wanted the biggest ship that you could, even if you didn't have the necessary support skills to fly it or fit it. And I was attacked by two pilots, and I did escape, but I thought, what the hell, and I went back for a fight, which there's no way I could have won, but I just wanted to get back in there and get my teeth into it. And that's what I did. And I did lose the fight. But I must have made an impression to the two pilots that were there because they had a chat with me and then invited me to join their corp. It was a corp called Callista Industries. And that corp was in the process of joining an alliance which was called Bruce. And that might mean something to some pilots who were around 16 years ago. And at that point, Bruce was moving into a system called PC9. AY, which is the one I'm making my way to at the moment. Now, I'm looking to go through the JH gate, but I don't have any bookmarks above that gate. I'm just going to take a little look and see if there's any bounce points. It's 34.2 AU. There's no celestials around it. If we take a look at the solar system map, we can see that there's nothing around it. So there could be bubbles on it, but so be it. So this is not something you should ever really do. 
is warp straight to a gate. And there is a saber there. Now a saber is an interdictor, so it can light up bubbles. Oh, and I've got my and I'm in a bubble. So this could end up being a very short trip. Oh, I'm still cloaked. I might make it through. So their bubble must have been lined up to something else. Oh, these are the joys of Nullsec. There we go, and the other side isn't bubbled. I'm in GH. Okay. So I do have bookmarks in this system. So Bruce moved to PC9AY, and so did I, with Callista Industries, which was probably quite a small corp. I, I can think there was maybe about half a dozen really active players in it, including a chap called Calavoz, who had very calming Welsh accent. There was a chap called Casta Day who was very decent. And his goatness, who was a, a bit of a PvP demon, American chap. I think he was ex-military or military. And a lot of people in, in Bruce were ex-military, particularly the ones who wanted to run the the fleets. This system which I'm about to jump into was the first system that I really got to know like the back of my hand. And I have got a <laughs> I've got a friend in this system at the moment. I know he likes to cause trouble here. This chap here. Who will crop up in my sto story later on, in my Eve story. One of the things about Eve is that the way that you picture a solar system in your head is not like... It's unique to you. It's not like how anyone else in your corp, your alliance, will do it unless you're sharing an illustration of, of the system and you've built up your picture of it by then but I've discussed this with people in who've been in the same corp as me and in the same system as me as to how they even picture the system like with the gates being on the west or the left or the right and even though it's the same system we, we all have our own take on it so this system was something that I got to know very well at the time because we were a fairly new alliance we were alliance of a few corps who weren't, the, the pilots in the alliance weren't particularly experienced, but there was a large number of them. I mean, we're talking about a thousand or so, and a lot of them were active, like really active. And we would go out in numbers, and we wouldn't have developed tactics, we wouldn't have the particularly advanced fittings in ships, but what we would have is a swarm, a blob, as it were. And I remember that lag was quite a common thing at the time. And it was quite a well-organised thing for a massive low security space new alliance. Looking back on it, it is quite impressive how, how it came to be. And I think it was powered by enthusiasm rather than knowledge. And when we were here, there was no such thing. The only structures that we had were pauses. There was no such thing as citadels or Rituro engineering complexes or anything like that. There was two, two stations in space. And because it's Syndicate, they were NPC stations, so anyone could dock there. And back then, you made your ISK by shooting rats in either the belts or in missions. I don't remember there being anomalies at all. And it was a great system because it it was the start of a dead end you had on one end your gh which was the entry point i've got a catalyst in space within 10 so on one side your gh which was the entry point and that gate was usually bubbled so between seven and eight so we're probably talking outside the three station that catalyst is just take a little look i'm cloaked and then off PC9, we had a, just a single system, T22, which I think has an awful lot of belts. Oh, there's Darkon. In his new metamorphosis. And they've got a bubble out there for him. Hmm. And then the other system that went out was XP, which led to a cluster of three 
other systems which had an ice belt and they were on a little triangle. And it's great for chasing people and catching miners. But they were really well organized. We had chat where a chat channel for Intel. We had oh I can't even remember the name of the app, but we did have something which provided comms as well. Let me just see. Should we try and blow up this bubble? Clearly somebody could be cloaked around and about here. Oh, and there's that catalyst. So yeah, what you quite often see in low sec and null is these station games, people hugging the station. And obviously it's slightly different in null sec because I could attack him and there's no station guns to attack me. So the intel used to go around pretty quickly and it was quite disciplined. And that's really how I learnt about EVE, was was through that. There was a, a program, a reimbursement program. You were expected to go on your own fleets, but w we did fleets with Bruce, but we also did fleets with just Kalista, just little roaming fleets. But I didn't really know what I was doing at that point. But I knew it was fun and it was very much a social thing as well. At least within the corp that I was in. And you got to know these people. And they had an infinite amount of patience with me because I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was very much the, the slowest in the pack. But then Bruce got really, really big. Too big for this little pocket. So we moved over through GH, this system, to another system called M2. And there was a pipe that went up there of about a dozen systems. And we ended up taking that over for the most part. And the rats were slightly better and the mission agents were better. And it was very secure. And we started to get attention and fights from other people. And I'm going to be in trouble here because I have elected to be inside a bubble with a cloaky Loki. And I'm dead, so I will ask him to pod me. So I can get back home. But this is what happens in null sec because of the bubbles. And to be honest, when I saw that Loki on D scan, should have known he was coming to get me and I should have cloaked up. It's not worth the risk just for a bubble, but so be it. So this is my first experience in Bruce of seeing things like capital ships, which just blew my mind. Still learning about Eve. Then we were all asked to be on for a particular time to pack up our stuff. And we went from PC9, must have been a, a couple of hundred of us, jump by jump to Fountain. And we took an outpost, which was a big deal at the time. And as we were leaving PC9, there was a ship turned up with a doomsday device. Ticket was one of the first Titans and wiped out an awful lot of our fleet. They had to reship. I just jumped through and missed it. But it was described to me as like, well, I, what I was told was the screen went white and that was it. You were, you were gone. And I think it was one of the first times that this doomsday device had been used. Certainly the first I'd even heard of it. But to our credit, we all reshipped, or well, everyone who needed to reshipped. We went to Fountain and we took the outpost, which was true null space. And that was the beginning of the end of Bruce. It should have been the, the, the start of something special, but where they had the enthusiasm to be able to conquer NPC null sec space, when it came to dealing with true null sec, Two zero zero, meaning that there wasn't any NPC stations as such. You had to deal with the politics of other alliances. And I think that that was where the weaknesses in, in, in Bruce truly showed. As I remember 
There was so many corps that getting a decision made by the Alliance was just not something that could be done in the amount of time that it should have taken. It always took a, a, a long, long time. And it just felt like wading through mud. And that was my initial EVE journey, was going from not knowing anything to being in a Nullsec Corp Alliance and going to the high of getting the outpost to the low of the Alliance basically disintegrating. And then you fall back down into basically being in a cult where everyone's leaving and and going back to just being on, maybe you're the only person online in the cult. And it, it was a bit of a fall in the Eve experience. And that's the point at which I stopped playing for a few years, like a good few years. And I didn't even think about Eve for a few years. And then it must have crossed my mind one day and then I installed it and came back and was playing as a single player doing I ran a few missions and then I found out about faction warfare and I was doing faction warfare solo essentially in an Algos and it was it was a lot of fun I had a good little Algos fit and I was doing it in an area called Verge Vendor when I met this chap Dark on Chanlin. And this was, I think, about seven years ago, six or seven years ago. I think that being a faction warfare player at that time, who was also fit for PvP, was quite a rare thing. And it was something that people enjoyed as well, because there was an awful lot of players who were not fit to fight or not even fit at all going into the faction warfare plexus with like an empty atron and just going afk or some bots as well doing the faction warfare so to actually be a pvp pilot he wanted to have a fight with someone else and going into a plex and finding a faction warfare pilot there who not only didn't warp off but who was up for a fight was something that quite rare but also good for people who were into PvP to come across. So after a couple of fights like that, Darkon invited me to a, his corp that invited me to the corp that he was in. Now, at that point, I was very different in my life from I, when I was in Bruce. When I was in Bruce, I was a single guy. I was living on my own. But when I came back to Eve, I had a couple of kids, married, and I couldn't, I said no because I didn't have what I perceived as being the space in my life to have a cop the same way that I did when I was in Bruce. I couldn't be there to turn up at all hours or sit with my headphones on with comms on. I wanted, I liked the Eve that I was playing, which was on a laptop, semi AFK, I could hop in and off at my own time, no headphones, just do my own thing. And then Darkon explained to me that the corp he was in, which was Stay Frosty, didn't essentially have ongoing requirement for comms. It was pretty much like you make your own content. There would be the occasional roam. If there was a, 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 a small ship roam arranged like on a weekly basis, you would go on for comms, you would stick your phones in and what have you. But it wasn't like a 24-7 thing. Or if you wanted to do something impromptu, then you could say, look... I'm on Discord if anyone wants to hop on. But it was far more laid back. There was no drama. And I liked this version of EVE, so I joined it. And then I was with a band apart, which is the alliance that Stay Frosty was in, for about the next six years. And after a few years of that, of doing low-sec PvP, that's when I discovered ganking. And I used to alternate between doing the ganking during the week and then the PvP at the weekends. And that was hilarious, just... My kills at the weekends would be frigates, and then my kills during the week would be multiple pilot training certificates, large-skill injectors, and, and the 30-day plex, as it was at the time. And I've heard said quite often that what makes EVE, and what I've talked to you about here, isn't really the, the software, or the technology... Or even the fittings. I mean, I can't remember the fittings that I did 16 years ago or what have you. But what I do remember is the stories and the people and the 
things that we did, the rooms that we had that stay in my brain, the kills, the the, the, the adrenaline that you have with your first fights and your first fleet fights, and they're the things that stay with you. It's the stories and the people. And to have that for 20 years, that's 20 years of players, each having their own stories and all having their favourite moments and experiences. That's what EVE's about. You can't explain that to a non-EVE player. About the ping and the notifications you get when you get a kill. Or being part of a fleet that does something extraordinary. Or unplanned encounters and fights that you win that you should really not have won. And an awful lot of kicking yourself for fights that you could easily have avoided and shit losses that should never have happened. But what's made it for me the last few years has been the community aspect. And I'm quite fortunate that I've got a few different communities that I participate in, that I engage with, whether it's the Aband Apart Alliance chat, or the Gankers have got a chat and a Discord, or the Discord for my own new alliance, or the community on YouTube, or the Tweet Fleet on Twitter. And I know there's very active communities on the EVE forums, on, on Reddit as well. And there's a fair few pilots that we've lost along the way. And the way that EVE has developed its own culture to light signals for people that we've lost. These aren't things that are written into the code. This is a cultural thing that's developed from the players themselves. The language that's used, the GF, the waving, the, the way in which New Eden works. I mean, EVE wouldn't exist without all the work that CCP have put in over the years for the design and the execution. Beautiful game. But it would be nothing without the players and the stories. So here's to EVE, to CCP, to every pilot who's ever logged on. Happy birthday, EVE, and I'm looking forward to the next 20 years. If you want to share some of your stories, some of your favourite moments from EVE, over the last 20 years, please do so in the comments below. Any good stories, I'll contract you over a skin, so remember to subscribe and leave your in-game name with your story. I'm MacGyver, thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.